Almighty God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. We serve a great God. We serve a God that can do anything. The true and the living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Israel. The one that loved us, the one that saved us with his only begotten son, Jesus, who shed the blood, hallelujah, on Calvary, and redeemed us from the curse of sin and death. Hallelujah. We are part now of the kingdom of God. One of my favorite people in the Bible, hallelujah, that magnifies God and, you know, just shows us real life is found in the Old Testament. I love to read the Psalms. I love to read about King David. Hallelujah. So come on and go with me as we look beginning in the book of Psalms, the um, 80. Let us pray. Father, I thank you and I praise you for all that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our pathway, Lord. It gives us hope. It gives us strength and it helps us to see you in all your glory. Hallelujah. So, Father, I pray as we read your word and read about King David that you would, God, anoint me to speak your word, Father. Anoint me, Lord, to say those things that you would have me to say. Say, Father, and I pray, God, in the matchless name of Jesus, that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, Father, let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, I pray and I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 86, I want to begin reading in your hearing from verse 3. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. I love how King David lets us know in this prayer for mercy, he's also going to glorify God as well, his excellencies. But David shows us how to humble yourself in the time of trouble and look to God for help. I'm reminded of our nation right now. This nation is in trouble. And we are in need of the hand of God to move on behalf of those that are crying out to him. He said, if my people who are called by my name, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, would humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. He said, then I would heal the land. Oh, that we would have a heart like King David that sought after God to do his will. He says in verse five, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Oh, when you humble yourself and call upon the Lord, he will move on your behalf. Verse six says, give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you for you will answer me. David was a man of faith who put his trust in God. It says in verse eight, among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord nor are there any works like your works. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Hallelujah. Who was this great man of God? This man is known in the book of Acts the Acts of the Apostles, as a man that was after God's own heart. There was a wicked king in David's time. 
His name was Saul. And Saul did not do the will of the Lord. And so it says here that in Acts the 13th chapter, that the people began to ask for a king. They didn't want to be judged anymore by the prophet Samuel, but they wanted a king. And so the Lord gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. He gave them him for 40 years. It says in verse 22 of Acts, the 13th chapter, and when he had removed him, God removed Saul. He raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. In other words, he raised up David, the one that would carry out the will of God. He raised up David, the one who pleased him the most. Oh, don't you want God to use you in that way? Don't you want God to think of you in that way that you please him? Hallelujah. He said that David pleased him the most. That's a great honor for King David. He's one that conformed to God's will and to God's purposes who would do all of God's will. He was going to do everything that God wanted him to do. He was going to carry out God's wishes and not his very own. He was going to accomplish all that God raised him up to do. That is what God considers to be a man after his own heart. One that'll do what God tells you to do. One that will not only do it, but accomplish it and complete it all the way to the finish line. Oh, hallelujah. David in trouble. Back in the Psalms, in the 86th Psalm that we were speaking about. And no one knows when this Psalm was really written. Com commentators don't know exactly at what point in David's life. But it shows us how David humbled himself in a time of trouble and sought after the Lord. This is the kind of man and woman that God is looking for. Those that will lay their agendas aside and those that will say yes to the Lord, yes to his will, yes to his way, yes to his purposes. Yes, they will obey God. Hallelujah. God is looking for obedience in this turbulent time that we are in. It's easy to go with the flow, go with all of the stuff that is going on in the world. You know, get along to get along. Let everybody just live, live. But God is not looking for that type of people. God is looking for a people that will stand for him, stand for truth and righteousness that would cause men to want the Lord. You know, when they see how strong God's people are, when they see how um, God's people want to please him, that will draw through by the Holy Spirit working in believers. That's going to draw people out of the darkness that they are in, draw people out of the turbulence that this world is in and help them to put their eyes back on the Lord. David, again, was a man after God's own heart who will do the will of the Father. Going back to Psalms 86, I want to look again at verse 9. It says, all nations are whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. See, David knew who the true and the living God was. And although people, even in David's time, were caught up in 
may have been caught up in idolatry or may have been doing things um, that are wrong in other nations because when David was king he ruled and he pleased God so in his time he was a righteous king and he did the will of the father so he would not have allowed idolatry and all of those things that take place freely while he was in rulership but other nations around them were uh, serving other gods little g and worshiping idols but david did not allow it but david could see the future he was a man of vision he could see that in a future all nations were going to bow before our Lord and Savior Jesus. It says it over in the book of Revelations. If you look at the book of Revelations, the seventh chapter, and um, you look at verse nine, it says, after these things, I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. Hallelujah. Again, it says in verse nine, it says a great multitude, no one could number. And then it says of all nations, so all nations are going to stand and give God glory when it's all said and done after, you know, the go through the tribulation, those that are left behind. And when God, you know, reigns here on earth, hallelujah. When they come out of that tribulation, all nations are going to give him praise. Do you want to be part of the kingdom of God? Do you want to stand on the side of righteousness? Hallelujah. You can stand. You don't have to give in to all of the evil that we see ourselves surrounded by. But we can be the light and the salt of this earth that, you know, shines light in this darkness and preserves, you know, this world as well. We are part of the kingdom of God. And I thank God that he's given us the ability through by his holy spirit to be able to stand the holy spirit will strengthen you lead you guide you direct you hallelujah and speak to you and open up your eyes so that you can see you know what is really going on so i would encourage you today to be like david to be a man and a woman after God's own heart that will do his will and that will fulfill his plan and his purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Again, it says over and I'll end with, I can end with so many scriptures, but I'll end with the scripture in the book of Acts, the 13th chapter. And I'll end with the 22nd verse again, where it says, and when he had removed him, he raised up for them, David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Hallelujah. Know today that God loves you. Know that I love you. I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, go after God. Hallelujah. And keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you. Close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want 
to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb, because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to Accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.